we're back. Howdy y'all, this is Ethan Monreal playing more Oracle of Seasons, and last time we were here, we went to the old area that the Temple of Seasons used to be in, found out we needed to go to Sabrosia, threw a bomb in a volcano, made shit blow up, and then somehow that led us to the 8th dungeon of the game, the Sword and Shield Maze. Um, and that's where we're at right now. So this time around we're going to go through the 8th dungeon and probably get the dungeon item and maybe beat the mini-boss, I'm not sure about that. But uh, we'll just do our best and see how things go, because this dungeon is a little bit complicated and a little bit long. But luckily for us, we actually get the dungeon item pretty early into our journey into the dungeon. But anyway... Um, this dungeon being long, though, is useful because it gives me a chance to talk at you nerds and tell you what's going on with me and my past, and you are going to get ex to experience, um, basically what the fuck was going on with me when I first played this dungeon. So, if you don't remember the story of Ethan Bonreal as a child, I played Oracle of Seasons a lot when I was about 11 or 12. I could only get up to the fourth or so dungeon, and then I just couldn't get further, and so I basically raged with that game for like three or four years. Uh, I came back when I was 16 and started playing it again, and breezed through that game, and was like, what the fuck, I don't remember this being so easy. Um, but that was until I got to this dungeon, so this is the actually like the only dungeon when I was younger that caused me like a little bit of grief. And I think maybe it was the place in my life where I was at, but for some reason, this place just tilted the shit out of me, because there are puzzles in it where it looks like you should be able to pass the puzzles or not do them, but you really do. Um, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So this piece of shit right here, I used to literally like be here for like five minutes straight just throwing my ass into this pit, because for some reason my gay ass refused to believe that this pit was too big to jump over because look, look at that shit, it looks like you can almost make it and the ice makes it feel like if you're just a little bit faster on your fingers you'll be able to get over there but you can't. <laughs> um, and it, I just didn't want to believe that, like I remember just sitting there being despondent being like why is this game fucking broken, I hate everything. But like I was grown enough at that point in time where I should have known that that is not how things would have worked out. And that they wouldn't fucking put a puzzle in a dungeon, or just put a switch over there that you can just get to. Like, obviously you have to do something to get to it. Um, and I just really didn't want to believe that. I wasn't in the right place in my life. My chakras were not aligned. But now, uh, I'm, I'm older, um, and I am less tiltable. So... I basically don't do that, and that's actually something I used to do a lot. When things did not go my way, I would just get really despondent, or like just start doing a task repetitively for no reason. Um, to kind of... I don't know why. I don't really have a good reason why. It's just something I would do, so... I have vivid memories of me like tearing essays up because they weren't good enough for me, or... Um, just completely giving up on homework assignments because I got the wrong answer once. Um, and it took me a while to learn not to do that, and it was a very hard, it was a very hard process. Um, I would just like basically be like, life isn't fucking worth living. I got the wrong fucking answer on this math test. Everything is disgusting. Um, but now I'm just kind of more in a place where I would just laugh at myself and put it down for a bit and maybe go, uh, I don't know, smoke on my bubble pipe or whatever. But, um, I understand why I was like that to an extent. Um, I just didn't know how to deal with my emotions, TBH. So another thing I used to fucking, like, another thing that tilted me was after I finally accepted I couldn't jump over that. I would get to this room and legit be like, there's no fucking way to do this room. This game is so dumb. I hate it. I hate this game. But in reality, here, I'll show you what you need to do. This... Oh, you know what? We can't kill anything. I forgot. This is how you... Okay. This is how you basically get through the room. So, you have to stand in front of that statue completely still and then not kill anything. And then it will awaken. 
And I was like, I figured that out on accident, because eventually I just dicked around and raged my way into figuring out the right thing to do. But if you uh, give that owl a mystery seed, it fucking tells you what to do. It tells you to be silent and just watch the thing. Um, but I just refused <laughs> to believe there was any happy solution, and I was like, this game's fucking busted, I hate it. Um, but no, that, that really just is a statement on how... Uh, angry and how gigantic of a nerd I was when I was younger. Um, but now I, I'm, again, like I've said like three or four times in a row, I'm not fucking like that. Um, thank goodness, because it is very easy to be like that when you're frustrated, because it just, it, I don't know, there's, you feel bad, you feel like just talking shit to the video game you're playing, I don't know, dude. Whew. I'm not gonna lie, my mouth is a little bit tired from talking, so I've tried to record this video like three or four goddamn times, and I just get furious that my commentary isn't as good as I want it to be, so I just start over. Um, which is, I guess, a little bit similar to the stories I just told, but um, I do like to have, I guess, quality content on here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want my videos to be really boring, because anytime I re-listen to my video and I'm like, holy shit, this is a goddamn snooze fest, um, it just generally irritates me a little bit. And not that I think that I need to constantly be entertaining, because that's one of my main critiques against a lot of Let's Players, is that they try too hard to be fucking funny. Um, it's more that I just feel like there should be a flow between the action on screen and what the creator or the content provider is putting out there. So I feel the need to have some sort of flow to my communication with y'all. I don't want there to be awkward pauses a lot. I don't want y'all to clearly see that I'm grasping for straws trying to figure out what I'm talking about. Uh, and part of this is just because that is what I want to put out to the universe. I feel like that's what makes a quality Let's Play. <sighs> oh man. By the way, we got the dungeon item, friends. <laughs> um, you may or may not have noticed that, but we got the Hyper Slingshot, and we're only like, what the hell, like, seven minutes into this video? That was, an, that was pretty quick. Usually we get it towards the later half, but you get the Hyper Slingshot pretty early in this dungeon. Which is handy, but um, that also means there are a lot of puzzles involving it. So this room gives you the first tutorial of what the Hyper Slingshot actually does. So it shoots out three seeds at once, and then that allows you to hit three switches at once, right? Handy. Neat. Wonderful. Uh, but it's actually a really boring item in my opinion. I feel like it... In practice, like, when you're fighting enemies, the Hyper Slingshot doesn't add anything useful, because they can only really get hit by one of the projectiles at once to begin with. Um, and so really it's just an item that solves very specific puzzles, which is something I don't like in Zelda games in general. Um, I hate items that, like, you basically only use in one dungeon, and then you can't use them. Um, much like the spinner in Twilight Princess, I really think that item could have been a lot more interesting if they didn't make it so that you can only use it in certain places. That and the Dominion Rod, they're, they're both like that. But, anyway. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but I just had my last day of my job, or my second job rather, slash internship. Um, that was yesterday, and I said my goodbyes, and I'm actually glad to be done in part because I really hate commuting, as I always complain about, but also just because I like to have more free time to myself, um, and me commuting plus working there for seven hours ended up being about eight or nine hours of my day every day, um, and it's nice to have time to myself when I don't have class. And then also I have another job, as I mentioned, that I also do. Hey, it's the mini boss. So this mini-boss is annoying, um, well, we're gonna need these, but... And the reason for that is it's about to murder us, isn't it? Um, is because that. It does a lot of damage, basically. Um, it also uses sprites that are later gonna be used for the next to final boss in the game, so that's a heads up. Um, you're going to be seeing those attacks again, and they're going to do even more damage when we do see them. But that's fine. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to it. 
<laughs> um, and my jawline's a little bit tired. I've I talked a lot <laughs> today. I've been talking a lot the past few days. I'm trying to be a little bit more vocal in class. Which is actually a really interesting... Another interesting change in my life is I used to not talk that much. Um, and I still kind of, when I'm really comfortable with people, or I don't feel like putting on the facade of being more friendly than I am, I um, basically just don't talk. Um, and I'm more likely to like nap <laughs> than really contribute to a conversation or um, hang out, hang outery. I don't know what to call it. Fun havery, uh, hang out sesh, uh, a kickback as the kids call it. Actually, I've never heard anyone call a kickback a kickback in person, so I don't know if that's something people on the internet just made up to spite me and make me feel old, or just um, that only younger people say that, which is also possible. It's really awkward becoming cognizant of like yourself aging and not being in touch with things anymore, but such is the way of the world, and that's totally fine. Fuck! I fell into that hole. What was I doing? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we gotta make it back to the mini-boss. Holy shit. I'm not gonna lie, I took a sleeping pill a little bit ago, and it's kinda got me zooted a bit here. Um, I am really kinda having trouble concentrating here, so I think after we kill the mini-boss, we are gonna end the video here so that I can go to bed, because I'm pretty tired. Um, and I want to release this video tonight, so I'm gonna have to edit a little bit. Edit it. Edit shit. <laughs> Why are so hard? I gotta, I gotta fix this video so it ain't shit. But, what I was trying to say before I just fucking interrupted myself is that I am a good bit more vocal now as an adult, which is pretty legit. Um, but sometimes I feel kind of like I talk too fucking much. Um, and part of the reason why I even talk is because I realize that I have a drive to socially out, um, not out, socially isolate myself when I am feeling insecure, not feeling well. And I realize that that is the opposite of a solution. And then also, it's kind of like my gay resistance, basically, because I was always in school, like, afraid to say my opinions, because people would fucking make fun of me, because um, I was a homo. But now, as an adult, I'm like, I don't give a fuck what people say. Uh, I'm gonna say or do whatever I want, um, even if people disagree with it. But I realize now that that's actually not how things worked out, and I even kind of talked about that in the previous video, um, a little bit about how I say that I'll do anything I want, but in practice I don't, because I'm grown and I got people training, so I know better than to just say random shit. But I actually ended up thinking about that on my last day of work because my boss asked if um, so we had we had dancers um, as part of a presentation for like our final day of work, and um, my boss was like, maybe you'll find a wife, XD. And part of me was like, I'm a faggot. I'm not gonna find a wife. Um, but I felt randomly like very weak in that moment I was like should I tell her that I'm a homosexual because that's what I would usually do usually I don't compromise on that I just tell people I'm gay unless I, I think I'm in immediate danger but um, in reality is this how you beat this boss okay it's almost dead I can tell it's starting to move really fast dead. Welp, um, I'm gonna walk up to the boss room and keep talking, and then we're gonna start the next video by kicking that boss's ass, but, um, I used to not want to talk a lot when I was younger, because I didn't want to really draw any attention to myself. I just wanted people to think I was a shy nerd, so that they would leave me the fuck alone and not figure out, like, how gay I was, but... Um, of course, that doesn't always work, because some people can just pick up on it, like I mentioned in some previous videos, and more importantly, um, I'm black and I should be able to do whatever I want. <laughs> um, and so, I just 
worked towards being a bit more vocal with my opinions and stuff, and I think that's overall made me happier, although it has also put me into a bit more conflict with people, because uh, sadly, the, one of the things about being visible on being loud and proud is that people who can hate it can hear it, because you're saying it. I mean, it's not like I talk about gay shit all the time in public, but it's like... I do. I feel like if I am attracted to a man, I should be able to fucking say something about it, like, privately to myself or not directed to that person. Like, I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable and, like, sexually harass anyone, but I feel like if I am gay and someone assumes I'm straight, I should be able to correct them without it being a big deal. But in this situation, I was kind of afraid, and that actually bothered me a little bit, because I haven't felt fear like that in a while, because um, I really put a lot of effort towards trying to just always be myself, no questions asked. And of course that's not perfect, because sometimes you do have to shut your fucking mouth, it's part of being an adult, but I don't, I want it to not be because I'm afraid, I want it to be like a personal choice. But in this situation I was a little bit afraid, and I don't, I don't really know why. I think it's because, um, she had power over me, because she was my boss, and then also because, um, I just... I don't know, I didn't feel necessarily safe. And actually, I think one of my co-workers kind of picked up on it too, because she commented that I kind of flew out of the room when she asked questions about me having a wife or dating, and I was like, well, bye. Um, but, you know, whatevs. Um, but that's generally how I was when I was younger. Actually, we're going to try the boss on screen one more fucking time, because I'm a little bit furious he killed me. I want to really just be able to be open about myself, you know? I want to complain about things. That's that's kind of what it means for me to be an adult, is to like not have that kind of fear. I want to feel like I can overcome anything I face, um, so even if I'm in danger, I'll still be myself, because I'll just overcome whatever's endangering me, right? But. Again, that's not how things always work, sadly. This boss is really annoying, incidentally. But it takes way too long, and then you have to pause to switch items. I think that is something that they've gotten better about with newer Zelda games, is making it so you don't have to always constantly switch um, items, and that they make the inventory screen easier to get to. Holy shit, I just want to murder you, dude. Oh my god, I need to move out of the way. This thing's attacks do a lot of damage, by the way, if you get directly hit by them. Fuck. When I was younger, I used to actually, like, be really radical about, like, always being out in all situations. So, like, I would just never... Well, it depends. So... Um, later in high school and early college, I was just always out, no matter what the de the detriment to me was, basically, with like one or two exceptions. I um, mean, those were general safety concerns, and then also the other one was because of the relationship I had with someone, but I'll talk about that more one day. Fuck. Um, and so now as an adult, I kind of have to think more about it because I'm trying to create a career and my life isn't like in transition because one of the things that happens after high school is that you often uproot yourself a little bit and are not involved with the same people from high school as much, so it gives you time to reinvent yourself. <sighs> you know, I think I am doing this boss wrong. I think that you are not supposed to just keep switching. I think that you're supposed to, like, hit it <laughs> in between things. But I can't tell. So I'm going to wait for you to get closer. Okay, so that's not how you do it. So I, I'm pretty sure you just switch it back and forth repeatedly. Otherwise, if I don't figure this out, we're just cutting the video. And I will see you later. And we will figure out how to beat this boss.
because I actually don't remember what I did when I pra when I practiced this. It's been a while. Also, because my brain is tired of shit right now, dude. It's like this sleeping pill really has me fucked up. Oh my god, we killed it. That's good. So it does just take a long time to kill him. Anyway, um, so next time around we're gonna beat the dungeon probably 99% chance or maybe 95, who knows. Um, uh, other than that, thanks for watching. Feel free to comment. Tell me shit about yourself. I really appreciate when y'all comment. I read them. If you got a thumbs up on your comment on one of my Oracle of Ages video or Seasons videos or Ages, it was me because I, I read through all of them and I check for them. But anyway, thanks for watching y'all and bye.